Hey, welcome to Wednesday's Words here on May 13th. I'm excited to be joining you tonight, and thanks again for tuning in, uh, either tonight on Wednesday or whenever you can catch this and go back and look at it. Tonight, I want to continue with thinking about how we have faith in some difficult times. Tonight, I want to ask you to take your Bible and look with me in the Gospel of Luke in the 21st chapter. In Luke 21, we find Jesus back in Jerusalem. Not only do we find Jesus in Jerusalem, but we find he and his disciples located at the temple in Jerusalem. So if you'll join me in Luke chapter 21, verse 1 through 4. The scripture reads this, And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. For they out of their surplus put into the offering, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had to live on. You know, we don't know hardly anything about this widow woman and this scripture and in this text. Uh, We don't know her age. We don't know her name. We don't know what she looked like. We don't know if she had children. And if she did, we don't know the number of children. We don't know how long she had been widowed. We don't know what the cause of her husband's death was. But we do know she was a woman who was poor and she was a woman of great faith. Jesus commended this woman for her great faith. His commendation has caused her to be remembered. You and I, and as we've perhaps read the Bible some or been around in our Bible study classes, sometimes people, we get some familiarity with the scriptures and people might say, well, you know, the widow and the widow's might. And we may not be able to find chapter and verse, but we may know the story. We know the story of how she was there and she was noticed by Jesus. Ma'am, I, I'm just quickly say there are so many times when people seem to be on the periphery. They seem to be people that we just pass by. They're the unnoticeable people in life. And and that happens sometimes. People may not see other people because they're not in a place of prominence or position or power or they may not have that magnetic personality. They may be in the back of the room. Man, I love the fact that Jesus saw this woman. Other people were perhaps looking at people that are well known in Jerusalem, people that had a a good reputation, who had a, a great deal of clout. But Jesus saw this woman. He saw her life, he saw her faith, and he saw her gift. And so when I want to think about for a moment about what she did, The scriptures tell us that she put in two two small copper coins. In the Greek language, the word is lepta. It is might. Now, let me share with you a little bit of what this would have been like. That in the temple, there are several courts. And if you've looked at that replicas or drawings or, or read the scriptures, it talks about the court of Gentiles, court of men, court of women. Well, the, the treasury is in the court of women. And under the colonnade, there are 13 large wooden boxes. And each of these wooden boxes had brass fixtures or funnels that would funnel the coins down into the wooden box that was secure. So when people came by, they would take their coins and they would place them in this brass funnel. So metal on metal would make a noise. And as it made sounds, people would think, well, they must have given a lot, or that wasn't a lot. So as people would come, they would empty their coins, and perhaps some people, just saying, maybe some people, might have wanted to make it a a big splash and make it sound like it was something or a lot or an excessive gift. And so people could hear, and they got attuned to, well, that one over there sounded like they put a lot in, or that one wasn't much. And so people, unfortunately, will be people. So as she came to the place where she would give, she was at that place to give. And she was going to give two very small coins. 
Now, what I have in my, in my hand tonight is a replica of the widow's mite. And so as I hold this together, it, it, it demonstrates it's really about the size of our dime in, in our American currency or maybe just a, a little bit smaller than our dime. And so as she placed those coins in, Jesus had something to say. You know, a moment ago, I, I talked about how people are people, and it reminded me of that joke, you know, where two guys are, are in church and two, two young boys are in church, and one of them had some offering money to give, you know, and the other one began to search his trouser pockets, and he couldn't find anything, and he whispered to his friends as the offering plate comes by. He says, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't have any money. And the other little boy had already put his money, and he said, just as it comes by, just thump the bottom of it, and it'll sound like something went in. And so it's a lot like that, perhaps, in the court of women and in the colonnades. As people gave, they kind of wanted that sound. But when the widow was giving hers, it didn't make a great sound. Jesus said she was a poor widow. But I want to notice a couple of things about this. I want to notice a few things about how the favor of Christ endures while the favor of of the world passes away. You see, a moment ago I talked about how I don't know her name, I don't know where she's from, I don't know what she looks like, we don't know anything about her. But Jesus did. Jesus saw her, and he saw where she was, he knows what she had, and he knew her need. And Christ has commended her, and that commendation has been memorialized. You know, the widow's faith took her to the place of worship. The treasury, again, was in the temple in Jerusalem and the colonnades and the court of women. And some might have found a way to stay away from the temple during a hard time in life. I suppose she could have said, well, you know, I, I'm just a poor widow and these are nothing but rags and my clothes aren't really good enough to go to the temple. I need to find something better to wear, and I don't have the money for that. I don't have anything, so maybe I should just stay away. She could have had the excuse of, well, you know, I'm just a poor, wretched widow woman, and I don't have any means, any funds, any income, and I don't belong there. There are people who there who are at a higher standard of living than I am, and, and I shouldn't go. Perhaps she could have said, I'm ashamed to go because I don't have any large gift to give. Perhaps she might have thought, I've worked all week and this is all I have. Maybe she could have been bitter. Maybe she could have said, God's word teaches that God's people are to take care of the widows and the orphans. And the more people that are more prosperous and more wealthy than I haven't done a good job taking care of me. So perhaps she could have been bitter, but she wasn't. While she might not have been wealthy in income, she was rich in faith. Her shortage of funds did not keep her from the temple. She came to worship. There would be no excuses in her life that she would allow to keep her from worshiping God. Over these last few weeks, we've, we've looked at David. We've looked at how when his son Absalom was in a full-out rebellion against David, David still worshiped. When Saul was seeking his life, David still worshipped. There wasn't a time in David's life that he wasn't worshipping God through hard times. Even when his son died, he still worshipped. We saw last week where Job, when all the calamity and all the famine, all the things, that the children dying, the crops, everything that happened that was so horrible, and Joseph, Job rent his robe, put ashes on his head, and worship God. And here we find this widow lady with really nothing in life but two very small coins. But nothing was going to keep her from worshiping God. 
So the widow's faith took her to the place of worship. But not only did it take her to worship, the widow's faith moved her to give. You know, many would have thought I would probably be in that category as well if I, in my humanity and just in my flesh, I would have thought, well, sister, you don't need to give. But she wasn't interested in anybody else's opinion. She was interested in what she knew she wanted to do and has a gift of her relationship to God. We could have said, well, every penny that you have is needed for living. And maybe somebody could have said, well, perhaps when you get on your feet, you can start giving again. But that was not her heart and that was not her act of worship. For she considered giving an act of worship. So Christian giving has that spiritual significance. She couldn't give much, but she would give. I mentioned a moment ago about the lepta, the the two mites, these copper coins that scriptures speak about. You know, together they would form, these two together would be Roman currency of a quadrant. And that quadrant is the smallest Least value of worth Roman coin in the first century. To put it in these terms, it would be the payment of the average daily wage of six minutes of work. So out of a 10, 8, 10 hour day of work, it would be the equivalent of six minutes of payment. And that is all she had. She had six minutes worth of wages. All she had in the world. And so when she would approach, she would place that in the offering plate and Jesus would be there to notice. Her gift probably seemed insignificant to the rest. As other people who were coming and giving and maybe they were giving a lot more, maybe they were giving a little more, but they were giving more. But her gift was of equal importance to her because it's what she had. And it's what she would give back to God. She wanted to do something for the Lord. So her faith took her to the temple to worship. Her faith not only took her to to a temple for worship, but her faith prompted her to give back to the God who in her mind had given her so much. And then third, the widow's faith caused her to not only give, but to give all she had. Jesus saw this as the largest gift of the day. Let me repeat that back. He said in verse 3, Truly I say to you, the poor widow put in more than all of them. And I can just, in my imagination, see Jesus and his disciples in the court of women, under the colonnades, in the 13 wooden boxes with the brass trumpet flares where people would pour their gifts in. And Jesus, as we already said, saw her and saw her gift. And when perhaps it didn't make much noise, metal on metal dropping in, Jesus caught the attention of his disciples And said, that, guys, that is faith. You want to see what faith is? That is faith. That's faith to give all you have. She has given more than anyone else. Jesus saw it as the largest gift of the day. He said she gave more than anybody else. Because God measures our gifts by our ability to give, not by the value of our gift. The others gave, as Jesus said, from their wealth. But the widow held nothing back. And I can only imagine what type of inward struggle she must have or might have had. That inward struggle about that gift. If I give this, she might have thought, I absolutely have nothing. Nothing. But still, out of her love for the Lord out of her faith for God's provision in her life, 
she would rather give a love gift to God and trust God for whatever else she would need. Faith moved her to give it all. Faith giving is revealed by what we keep, not what we give. That's faith giving. There's a message I hear, I've read about it, that someone had in their gravestone in England. This is what it said. What I spent, I had. What I saved, I lost. But what I gave, I have. That mimics back to what Jesus teaches us. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. After all, we have a pattern of our Father, the giving God in our lives who would give us His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would never perish, but have everlasting life. And He would give us eternal life for those who believe that Jesus Christ is indeed their Lord and their Savior, and who call on Him to be their Savior and their Lord, and pattern their life to become a disciple of Him. And so I know times are tough. I know... People are being furloughed. I I, I understand. I'm hearing more and more and more reports of furloughs and job losses. And you and I watch the news and we see how many are applying for unemployment and all the different things that are happening in our community, in our state, in our nation, and around the world. But there are times that I want to come back to as well. People like David who would still worship God in the midst of struggles and hard times. People like Job, who said, the devastation of this is almost too much to bear, but I will still worship the Lord. The people, person like this woman in Jerusalem, who would continue to worship, continue to give, and to trust God with all she had. I pray that you and I will be encouraged because while people are receiving bad news, we still have a good and gracious God. May I pray with you tonight. Father, we come to you and I thank you for the blessings that you give to us. God, I thank you for this woman of great faith. I thank you that you teach us, that you see us, you see our need, you see our sacrifice, you see our faith. Father, strengthen us in our lack of faith. Father, undergird and comfort and console us as we are people of faith and as we learn to trust you through a variety of trials and hardships. And may we not succumb to the temptation of thinking you don't love us, you don't care for us, And may we rally around in God and come to you and cling to you perhaps even more fully and more out of devotion to you because we do know you are a God who cares and a God who is gracious to us and who will supply all our needs through Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord, and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.